Okay, at this point in the build, I am going to put together all the uh, tail section, the stabilizers, and the, that sort of thing. And here's all the parts I have. They've been all cleaned up and are ready to glue together. So that's what's going to happen right now. Now it's time to put the wings onto the fuselage. And this portion of the wing area with the stick and the rudder pedals is supposed to fit right in there. Let's see if it's going to fit. If it does, we'll glue it. Alright, I've put together the tail sections. The rudder and the two horizontal stabilizers. And then there's a bottom piece <clears throat> that fixes right here. So, it is now time to try and glue these on and see how well they fit. Okay, here we are with all the tail sections glued on, wings, the underside is glued on. I had to use some sprue goo. There's a few low spots here and there. Nothing real serious, but I just wanted to kind of tidy it up a bit, so waiting for that sprue goo to totally solidify. Then I'll sand this all smooth and we'll do do some masking after that and we'll start painting it. Now I have chosen to go with this version right here. Um, it says right here that it's the 149th Guards Fighter Aviation Regiment, 2nd Ukrainian Front, summer of 1944. It's got a dark blue and very dark gray camouflage pattern on top, and the bottom is a kind of a medium grayish blue <clears throat> um, I think I have the upper surfaces of the airplane covered by a couple of colors I picked out that were Tamiya colors and uh, labeled them Yak so I knew that's what they were one is this XF24 which is a dark gray and it looks well you can't tell in the camera but it looks like a really good match to the dark and then the other color is a medium blue XF18 and it almost matches identically with this other color on top. As for the bottom, I don't have that color but I have a couple of colors I'm going to mix. I'm going to take this color which is XF23 light blue I'm going to mix it, I think, with a little bit of XF-19, the sky gray. Either that or I mix it with a touch of, oops, of this neutral gray, XF-53. Thinking, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get, I, there's no way I can match this exactly. No, I'm okay with that. I don't have a problem. Uh, I just want to get as close as I can. So I'm thinking these two right here mixed together might make that, or the sky sky gray mixed with either this blue or this blue. So I have to experiment on a spare piece of plastic, see what I can come up with. Um, but yeah, I'm almost ready to start painting. 
once I get the bottom sanded and the cockpit um, masked off. That's really the only thing I have to mask off except for right there. And I want to put some uh, pieces of, of foam inside these uh, air scoops and this back uh, wheel. There is nothing else that needs to be masked off. All right, so I shall move forward. Well, I am pretty much ready to start painting. I've got the cockpit all masked off. A couple pieces of foam stuffed into these intakes. Got the rear wheel masked off. I don't have to mask off this part here because that's going to get covered up. Oops, that just dropped out. I'll have to do something different there. Um... Yeah, and the seams all sanded down and smoothed out now. So I think it's time to just start laying some paint down and see how she looks. All right. So the paint job I did came out all right, except the colors are not what I really was expecting or wanted. Um, so I have a choice of just leaving it. Or trying to spray it again. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it looks okay, but the but you don't really see the difference in the colors unless you get up closer and it's a brighter light. When it's just a normal room light, it all kind of blends together and looks like one gray color. But I'm um, thinking. I'm leaning towards just leaving the color. I have a little bit of touch-up to do here and there where I didn't mask quite properly right here. I totally missed. And same thing on this side. And then uh, I forgot to mask up the, um, <clears throat> the exhaust. So I'm going to repaint that exhaust. Um, but other than that... I'm basically happy with it. I have to paint inside the scoop right here where the radiator is. So that, and the section here on both sides, and then the exhaust. <clears throat> so I got my paints out. I'm going to go ahead and do that touch up, and uh, when I come back, we'll. Um, Let's see, what are we going to work on next? I think what we're going to work on next is the undercarriage. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, decals are all on now. Painting is all done. Let's turn this over. I've had a couple of clear coats put down over everything. The propeller is actually pretty much finished. I just I'm putting the yellow tips on it right now. Just have to do the back side now. And that'll just go on there. I have the rear wheel totally done. I'm working on the main landing gear. But so far, so good. This has been a pretty nice kit. Uh, goes together pretty well. I have not had to use any putty yet whatsoever. I used a little bit of sprue goo on the underside. Um, <clears throat> where the wing bottom of the wing portion met the fuselage right here there was a, a little bit of a gap it wasn't big enough to really warrant using a any amount of putty or anything like that so I put a little sprue goo then sanded it down um, and that worked just fine everything else fit pretty well I elected to have the uh, engine cover 
uh, put in the closed position so I didn't really build up the engine or anything like that. I have the exhaust put on there and painted. Interesting thing about these airplanes, <clears throat> as far as the markings go, they had like this this particular uh, Russian World War II airplane. Um, you had their insignias on the bottom, their stars on the bottom, but there was no stars on the top of the wings. And then there were stars on the side and the tail. So um, I'm not sure why that is because pretty much every airplane I've ever built German or American or Japanese or Italian or whatever there is an insignia on one of the top wings um, every image I found of this particular airplane there was no insignias on top of the wings I guess they figured um, you know these big giant red stars were enough <clears throat> to identify them. So, uh, that's just a guess. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyhow, um, I'm happy with the way the painting came out. It, Even though the colors didn't come out exactly as I had hoped, uh, I'm still happy with it, and I'm just going to... I'm going to leave it. It's great. Looks good. All right, moving on. Well, I have all the decals on, all the paint is on. I've just got through <clears throat> attaching the canopy. And all that is really left to do is put the main landing gear on. Uh, I have the propeller done, I just don't have it on right now, so it's not in the way. Um, I've been looking over this landing gear and it's a little vague how it's supposed to get attached. There are these supports or actuator arms or whatever they are that go down into the wheel wells somewhere. It's really hard to tell exactly where they're supposed to go. I've been looking at them and trying to figure it out. I haven't quite figured it out yet. Uh, as for the landing gear themselves, they don't really help with the instructions to where how they're supposed to be hooked up. They just show some arrows going down into the landing gear wells. So, um, I'll have to figure this one out. I'm not sure why this is all so vague like this. Up to this point, everything's been pretty... Um, easy to follow. Okay, well, <clears throat> this is what's next, and um, I must persevere and finish this model kit. E either that, or I, um, well, I mean, I'm going to finish it no matter what, but if I can't figure out this landing gear, I may just build it wheels up. And here we see the model is finished. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out it was a pretty fun kit to build it was fairly easy to put together there was a few sections that in my opinion um, could be improved upon ICM uh, generally makes really good models. Um, I've built uh, like three or four ICM kits, I think. Um, and this one being my fourth one, I think. Anyway, um, the trouble spots mainly with this model was the landing gear and the uh, all the parts that went along with the landing gear. Um, the struts themselves were okay, except where they attached to the bottom part of the wing. There was no real solid 
connection points. And the instructions really didn't give you details as to exactly how they did connect. You kind of had to figure it out yourself. I mean, I did, but it still wasn't a, a solid connection point. And then you had to put the, um, all these um, support arms, these actuators, on the main strut and one on the on the uh, this one door. Boy, I can't get the camera to focus. Let me see if I can fix that. <clears throat> Well, that's a little better. Not much, but it's a little better. Okay, that's better. This one uh, actuator arm that opens and closes the uh, this one door, um, you're supposed to attach it after you have the door glued on. It's really the only way you can do it and so that was a little tricky and then the arms that attach to the struts they were really really fiddly to try and get to install because you had to install them down inside there and then hook it on to the strut itself and there just was no room down there and it was dark I didn't put a flashlight down there to help, but it didn't, you still couldn't see anything. <clears throat> and then it's not a very solid connection. So this landing gear is the weak point of this model is what I'm trying to say. Um, they could have done a, a better job of making a more solid connection. I, I mean, I don't know what, because I'm not a model maker, builder in, in that sense model designer but generally speaking it was a good kit I liked it it was fun it's a nice scale 132 decals were good they laid down nice and easy once you get a couple coats of um, clear on top of them you can't hardly tell their decals My paint job isn't exactly the way I wanted it to turn out, but <clears throat> here it is, and um, I think it's okay. <clears throat>